have come up to Long Ashton Golf Course this afternoon to find a man in his happy place. He's a Bristol City striker with 10 goal involvements in all competitions and he's got high hopes of firing Bristol City to the Premier League. Can you guess who it is? Happy with that? Not really, no. <laughs> I love how I stood there then looking at your shot as though I'm some sort of pro. How are you doing? How are you, mate? Good to see you. As always, as always. So is this a, is this a regular occurrence for you? Um, not that regular, but I mean, I try and have a golf club in my hand as much as I can, really. Yeah. If I would interrupt it with my, with my football career, to be honest. But yeah, I try and play as much as I can do. See, I'm not a golfer. 90% of my friends play golf but I don't play golf at all. Thoughts on the, the attire? I've tried yeah, to looks, sort of... No, it looks good. It looks good. Could do some See golf shoes. You could do some golf shoes, but um, you look the part, you do, yeah. Thanks. So what's your, um, what's your handicap? Um, it's not official, but it's probably, probably about 13. Um, I don't have an official handicap. I'm not a member at any of the courses around here, but yeah, I'd say, yeah, I'd say about 13 is about, about right. Any of the other boys golfers? I think Sam, is Sam Bell a golfer? Yeah, so I play with Belly, um, Max O'Leary. Max O'Leary's very good, very similar handicap. I usually take his money when we play. <laughs> um, uh, George Tanner plays a bit, and Tim. Tim Close as well. So that's probably the ones I can think of at the top, top yeah. of my head that, yeah, that play. So we try and get out. You know, when we have uh, Saturday fixtures and we have a day off in the week, we try and get up and probably get a full bowl going and play together, yeah. Because what are the rules? I mean, I, I guess from a footballing perspective, you're training a lot in the morning. Is the manager sort of saying to you, look, take it easy on the golf course in the afternoon? Or is it kind of free for all, go and do what you want? <laughs> no, nah, nah, the gaffer knows I play, but not, you know, I'm not out here. You won't see me here, um, you know, the day before a game yeah. or... I wouldn't go and play around and go for a couple of days before a game. I'll make sure it's in between a, a week or, or after a fixture, just go and play a few hills. Um, just so it's not any, it's not too, um, too wary on the body, you know what I mean? Make sure I get a buggy. But the gaffer's good like that. He loves his golf as well. Does he? So, yeah, you can have conversations about courses and stuff because, you know, he'll probably go and play nine hills this evening and have a stroll. But, nice. Yeah, so, you know, just try to keep it as professional as you can, but it's a good, um, it's a good category, yeah. I never realised Nigel was a golfer. Is he? Is he good? I don't actually know how good he is, to be honest. But he loves his golf. You know, we always have chats about different courses and stuff um, in and around Bristol. But yeah, he's. You know, I actually don't know what his handicap is. That's a good question. That's the next question I'll ask yeah, yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> so do you, I guess, this is is this your way of sort of take? You strike me as somebody that doesn't really get too phased by what goes on the pitch in a good way you know you don't let it affect you too much or at least impact life off the pitch so is this your chance to really just sort of switch off when you get some downtime kind of yeah you know i'm i'm quite a chilled i'm not too old going i don't have too much going on outside of my outside of football around my family um so this is one of the the other things that i love to you know kind of do keeps me going there's a lot of great golf courses around there it's nice to get out um, have a stroll, keep mobile, keep active. So, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't, um, I don't let football completely control my entire life, as it probably did when I was a bit younger. Not that it's my my main focus in life is football. That's yeah. you know, but as you get older, you, you get become more experienced. You know, learn how to deal with ups and downs and different things you're going through on football injuries and et cetera, et cetera. So. You know, I'm a season pro now and it's just comes natural, yeah. Okay. Well, are you alright to sort of analyse my efforts here? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna let you know. Obviously have a I'm hit usually in. commentating on Naki playing, now it's exactly. his turn no, to yeah, sort of commentate exactly. on there. Uh, I'm gonna enjoy this. I would so advise as I said, you to, I'd never play. I would advise you to tee the ball a bit higher. First the ball, of all. The ball should be higher. Yeah, a bit higher. Okay. Higher. Higher than that? You can. That okay? Mm. Nah, it's still Higher. too low. Put your club to it. Okay, supple knees, arse out. Yeah, just have a go, man. That's the driver. Okay. Don't be scared. Here we go.
I mean, that's... <laughs> I assume there's... I assume there's netting that, No, that hit a car just now. No, it didn't. <laughs> it's something. Has that actually hit a car? I don't know, it hit something. I heard something, maybe not. I don't know. I... <laughs> <laughs> Am I? <laughs> I don't know. Am I liable for that or is no, this? No, no, that's you're not because that's a golf course. You're not. But I, mean, I hit it well. You hit it far right. You know, let's aim at the gaffer's office. Straight. Right. Well, we'll carry on this interview, <laughs> but um, you might not ever see me again. <laughs> no, that was good. Let me have a. Right. Quick. Okay. Your turn. <laughs> Can I just say I have. I haven't actually connected with the ball yet, so that was a real beginner's. <laughs> no, Ooh. that wasn't bad, you know. That was not bad. Much straighter. In golf, that would be a poor shot, but yeah, straight and far. Bit of a, a bit of a pull. So for you yourself, you've obviously, last season wasn't necessarily, probably, I guess from your perspective, you want to be starting games, but you bided your time and now you're firing on all cylinders this year you do you feel like you're really loving football I'm not not necessarily saying you didn't last year but are you feeling like you're really loving your football at the moment yeah I am I am because you know I've, I've I had to you know endure maybe a similar season to last year only once in my career that was my first season at Burnley in terms of having to buy my time having to be patient um, feeling like I'm doing everything I can do on a trainer pitch but you know obviously the lads in front of me were doing well, and, and, and that's, that was kind of a similar circumstance last season. I was given a few opportunities. I wasn't really able to take them. You know, I was fit. I was hungry. I did everything I can do off the pitch. I think the gaffer knew that as well, but he kind of had his assembled team, which was doing very well. You know, Antoine, Andy, and, and Chris Martin did fantastic. I kind of just had to sit there and be patient and wait and hope opportunities come. And, you know, it didn't really materialize. And it was one of those seasons that I, you know, I look back on and kind of learned a bit from it as well. And now to be playing again, scoring, I think, you know, I, I, I always would have loved for it to be like this here yeah. because, you know, I was brought in for that purpose. And a lot's gone on since I've been at the football club. You know, life's not the same as it was before. Um, but to be playing, finally in front of fans, you know, putting in good performances, scoring, feeling important again, feeling wanted. That's, yeah, as a footballer, it's as good as it gets. And it feels to me like you've actually got a really good relationship with Nigel Pearson as well. I think some people, you know, when you watch on and you're outside the bubble of a football club, I suspect fans sort of think to themselves, well, players on the bench aren't necessarily in favour with the manager, but that's not the case. It seems to me like you've, you've got a really good relationship with, with Nigel. Yeah, you know, if you, if you, just, you told me, a few years back, prior to experience and not really playing and having to sit there and bite my tongue, I probably would have said, no, I don't think I'd like the manager <laughs> yeah. or I'll get along with. But the gaff has always been good with me. Um, our, our relationship's always been good. I've always said this to everyone. I've, I've said on record, I think he's probably dealt with my situation the best as a person. Um, I felt like we probably could have communicated a little bit more, but that was probably my fault. It wasn't him. He never shies away from a conversation, but I probably didn't go in his office as much as I, I probably could have last year. But He's good as gold, you know, he knows me as a person, he knows what I can offer the group on and off the pitch. I'm a lively character, I'm bubbly, I'm always happy, I'm always smiling. Because ultimately I'm out doing what I dreamt of and I'm living the dream that, you know, we all we all wanted as a young kid, so I don't take it for granted. I mean, you have, you know, facilities like this, um, amazing stadiums, fantastic support, amazing city. You can't really ask for much more, so I just, I'm just grateful for everything I've got, really. I think it's testament to you. Every uh, coach or co-commentator we had on Robbins TV last season, largely the coaches that were to do with the under-23s, now the under-21s, could not have been more complimentary of your contribution to the 23s, the younger players coming through. Obviously, you're now partnering Tommy Conway as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where does he rank in terms <laughs> of uh, strike partners? I, I sense that... The two of you get on very well as well. No, we do. We do. It's, it's funny that you mentioned that because I felt, <laughs> I felt like I was the uncle that was just playing with the 23s every now and then last season. But um, You're you know, one of the top scorers <laughs> of the league, were not you? I think you played three games, scored four against Hull. Yeah, no, it was, it, was. Yeah, it was mad stats. Yeah I, I, yeah, I think I had like eight goals in three games. Um, you know, so that was the only way I could really try and 
make myself known yeah. apart from training and just try and do what was right. But um, yeah, playing with Tom, Tommy was great. Obviously, we had a relationship from back then. Even this season, um, when he broke through, he was playing with me as well. He yeah. scored his first goal alongside me. Um, you know, not taking any credit for that, but you know, when he broke through onto the scene and I was kind of one of those people that were near him, spent a lot of time on the bench. Obviously, you have conversations, yeah. warming up a lot. You know, our relationship just grew and, you know, he's a good kid, um, trying to learn, trying to soak up as much um, information as he can. And I'm just one of those players that obviously have that to offer, you know, and, and you know, our personalities click, sorry. So, you know, he's a good kid. I get along very well and then that just transports to the football pitch. And now, like you, he's obviously playing international football as well. Do you want to go again and uh, then I'll, one, oh, I'll shank clip. another one? Yeah, this time you... Please don't hit no more vehicles. <laughs> I'm not very good with driving the ball either. Beautiful. That's a bit... Mm. That was straight. It works. Right that, then, let's see what happens now. It's up by the goalkeepers. See it just a little bit higher. A little <laughs> Keep going. H higher than that? Yeah. There? Yeah, there. Okay, well... No blue lights as of yet have appeared, so let's uh, see how this one goes. I'll try and sort of hook it back. Turn the club in your hand just a touch, yeah. There just there, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> one more, you have to go again here. One more. Don't rush this one. <laughs> you do everything Stage right. Stage fright, this is what this is. I'll tell you what, this is... Yeah, this is more pressure than playing football in front of 20,000 people, trust me. Yeah, I was going to say, it's a new experience for me. Okay. Right, I need to just keep my eye on the ball, I think. That's the... You do. Simple as that. Oh! That's okay. Bit I'm still slice. aiming for the road, which is a problem. Yeah. Some golf courses will still be in play. There we go. Practice anyway, makes perfect. should we uh, get inside? Go and yeah, have a sure. drink at the bar? Why not? Let's go. Uh, so we're back in more comfortable surroundings at Naki. Thoughts on my golfing ability? Any any future for me in to the game? Be... Yes, that's a good thing. You know, there's always room for improvement. I'd say you just need to play more. You know, it's like anybody, they start, they pick up a golf club. They, you know, they think it's easy until they go and have a swing. It's, it's never easy, but in order to get better, you have to play. So, yeah. We're not sure what I hit out near the road, but we've not had uh, <laughs> any uh, blue flashing lights come up yet. Um, anyway, back to you and your sort of career to this point. Growing up in Bermuda, who were your kind of influences early on that sort of got you playing football in the first place? Um, I'd say football was just near me. You know, my dad played football. My godparents, uh, you know, were big footballers as well. So I always had that in and around me. Um, Growing up, obviously that that wasn't professionally, of course, but you know um, the, the main sport of football. So the main sport in Bermuda's football. So growing up, that was kind of all I knew, and um, and as far back as I can remember, it was what I loved and what I wanted to do. And growing older, then we had you know a few local people that I was able to look up to. You know, one a lot earlier than my days was Clyde Best, and then kind of my young young ages. We had um, Sean Gota, as everyone in Bristol would know, and um, Kyle Lightbourne were two, who is currently the, the manager for my Bermuda national team, with two um, locals who were playing over here, making a name for themselves. So that kind of gave us, I guess, as youngsters, inspiration to, to, taste, to chase that dream, even being from such a small place. And you mentioned Sean Gota there. Ridiculous record for Bristol City was. Did he have any influence over your decision to come here in the first place? And has he been somebody you've sort of spoken to throughout your career? Yeah, he has been somebody I've spoken to. Um, I wouldn't say he, he probably helped the end bit. You know, <laughs> okay. I, I, I spoke with him once. I kind of knew I was certain. Me and my family had made our decision, um, and things looked like that. You know, they were going to happen. So I had a chat with him, and he just said, "Yeah, you know, it's once you get down, then you get playing, you get scoring. You know, they love you and." He obviously had the, the, the luxury of enjoying that, you know, playing regularly for Bristol City and scoring, you know, scoring loads of goals for the football club. And he just said, look, it's a great place. Um, I think when you get there, you realise, you know, 
how amazing it is to live there and, and such a club on, on the rise. So um, yeah, it just you know it just eased my mind before I you know I signed the dotted line. Yeah. And you, you get back to Bermuda a lot, judging by sort of social media yeah. and stuff. Of course, you play for the national team. What is that like? Obviously, you've captained the mm. national side as well. What is that like representing your country? Because I guess it's on the global stage, a minnow when it comes to bigger sort of tournaments yeah. and stuff like that. But it must fill, fill you with a lot of pride. Yeah, it does. It's, it's, I can't say it's like the pinnacle of my football career because I'll be lying. But it, something inside me, it always... It leaves me with such a good feel factor yeah. when I'm able to do well for my country, play and score in front of my front of front of my you know family, friends and and people. Um, you know, it's given me it gives it gives me a feeling that I you know I get you know when I've scored in a playoff final in front of you know it's eighty four eighty thousand people scoring at you know Ashton Gate in front of twenty plus thousand. It it gives me that and that could be in front of two three four thousand people, but just goes to show you what it's like to play and represent your country and yeah it's it's an honor it's a little bit unique um in that regard it's, it's probably obviously not the same as representing england to that capacity but yeah it's where i'm from and when i get a chance to play i do i do love it and are you sort of very close to your family a lot of them back in bermuda you know your dad yeah. and, and people like that as well yeah my mom my dad every everyone's in bermuda only only me and my wife are here and my two boys are here Everybody else is all my entire family are back in Bermuda, so yeah, that's home. Do they watch? Do they get to watch many games, or is oh, yeah. it a treat for them when you do go back and play for the country? Well, it yeah, that is the thing. But they they watch my games every weekend. Um, every weekend, my mom she tries to pretend like she's not a big f- football supporter, but she's a typical mom. She don't miss a moment. Um, um, even she sometimes don't like coming up because the stress of it. So she's. You'd think she's the one who has to prepare and play, but I guess that's just how mummies are, and yeah. they, you know, they they care so much. But she tunes in, and same for my pops. Um, when I say pops, my father. Yeah. He, you know, he, he loves his football as well, so he's tuned in, and yeah, my brothers, big football, big big football fans. So yeah, when I'm playing, which I'm doing at the minute, they they don't miss a moment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, ten is it ten goal involvements? I think so far, goals and assists for you so far this season. Mm-hmm. Double yeah. figures, you're yeah, right, yeah. yeah, which eclipses last season um, already. It seems to me that the squad at the moment for Bristol City seems very sort of tight knit. Of course, the last few results haven't necessarily gone City's way, mm-hmm. but the performances are there, which is what we didn't necessarily have last season in a maybe in a more sort of midfield defensive you know situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think um, I think the gaffer knew uh, what we needed to do this season, which um, pretty was pretty evident maybe be, come together more as a team, um, kind of still keep a, a relatively small, tight-knit squad. Out of out a few players that would, would help that, um, you know, um, Adam Nazi um, was a big bonus to us. Obviously, Rob Atkinson has grown in itself from last season, taking the step up, and now Zach Viner has shown the player that we all know he is. He's, he's shown on a much more regular basis and is getting the trust and belief from the gaffer, which is helping them thrive. And we've, we've, you know, we kind of have more of that solidarity. They've been able to keep the same three for, you know, Lord knows how many games now. And that builds um, a platform for us. And then we obviously have talent everywhere else in, in and around the, the team and the midfield. We have competition for places. Anyone in the midfielders could play. Likewise, in the attack, I think we have five attackers that can probably get in, in my opinion, every championship squad, if not 11. So, you know, we have a very good good core and a good team. And some players that aren't even getting opportunities that, you know, are really talented, uh, you know, um, I can kind of relate to that. I just, you know, just have to be patient and keep working and we have to keep that good continuity between us. And, you know, anything is possible, that's for sure. It does feel like there's a belief now that this yeah. squad can really push for, for top six. And you personally as well, it appears you're really relaxed and, and comfortable with life in Bristol. You enjoy the surroundings. We were talking earlier on about, mm-hmm. of course, um, the approval for the basketball arena that's going to come to mm-hmm. alongside Ashley Gate. That's something you enjoy, I think, yeah, you're no. going to watch too. Yes, I'm, I'm a big advocate for sports and everything. And, you know, 
um, the city, you know, is going to have that. So it just adds to what the, the, you know, the city has to offer. And, you know, I think for us, you know, being able to get down to watch the rugby, the women's, the, um, you know, the basketball, and then, you know, we obviously have the football. It's, it's great, yeah. Yeah, and aside from, I guess, your, your time now playing for Bristol City, what have been the kind of halcyon days of, of your career? Was it back when you sort of first started in Bermuda, or was it when you moved to Bradford, for example? What are the kind of real sort of core memories you have across your footballing career? Tough have, to pick. Yeah, it's tough to pick. I mean, for me, kind of, um, kind of getting the opportunity, because a lot of people forget my first football club was Carlisle because yep. it was such a short spell and that was my first taste of professional football. It didn't, you know, go to plan. Looking back, I'm very grateful for the opportunity, um, you know, signing a, a contract and being able to be a part of a, of a professional football club coming from just straight amateur background, um, you know, was amazing. But, it, you know, I had the setbacks of being released soon after that and having to dig deep and then get an opportunity at Bradford and kind of just climbing the football ladder really from the bottom of League Two, which we were at the time, going on, getting promoted, doing really well at League One, getting sold to a championship club, doing well in the championship, getting promoted, getting sold to a Premier League team. So I kind of had that, you know, upward trajectory, which I guess any anyone would, would dream of. And I was just fortunate enough to, you know, kind of live through all of those um, divisions and circumstances and it's, yeah it's just been great up to now and City were on the w wrong side of the result at Turf Moor but did that mean a lot to you getting that that goal up there it didn't quite sort of work out for you I guess yes um, obviously frustrated not to get something out of the game um, it was um, it was a difficult game they were they were you know very good in the day a uh, huge admirer how they're playing and how they want to go about things now um, but yeah it was good to you know to score ironically I scored against all my previous clubs this season, ah, you know, so Huddersfield. Of course, yeah, yeah. And, and against QPR the other day, thankfully I got that one, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah I, that thankfully. was a bit of a contentious one, that one. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure where that was going, but. Yeah, who knows where who it was cares? going, but it ended back in the net, so we'll leave it there. But, um, yeah, so, you know, you know, that's also a good feel factor yeah. as well, just to, you know, you obviously have... Um, I have a, a big appreciation for the previous clubs I played for, but as a footballer, you always want to try and get one over. I'm a bit frustrated we couldn't get the win um, against QPR, and I thought it was going to be the comeback, comeback and, and momentum shift that we need in the game. We just, you know, were just unable to get the second goal, but yeah. And do you, do you let, I guess, results, how long does that linger in your mind, you know, a, maybe a negative result? Or maybe you don't feel as though you played as well as you perhaps wanted to, for example. Are you quite good at switching off when you then leave the ground? Or is it something that sort of keeps you up the night after a game? How do you look back on matches? Yeah, I'm kind of like a, I'm like a 24-hour type of player. Um, everyone's different. You know, I kind of let it affect me in a good, negative, good or negative way, probably, you know, to the next day. I kind of just kind of have a switch of when I need to let it go rather same if it's gone well scored a couple of goals or played well it's on to the next one I think that's the joys of championship football right now is such a hectic schedule that we can't dwell too much when it goes bad or you know we can't um, you know get caught up when it's going well we still have to focus like right now it's full focused on, on Saturday and and for me um, I'm quite able you know quite able to, to let it go Initially, when it doesn't go well, like after QPR one the, the other night, you know, quite frustrated, thinking we were a better side. Um, it could have went either way, of course, but a bit frustrated. Just think, I think a lot of us could have played better. For myself personally, I felt like it could have had more of an effect on the game, but that's football. It was a point against a, a difficult team, and you just have to move on, yeah. QPR's a tricky one. We seem to always win in London and they seem to yeah. win at Ashton Gate. Well, at least that's been the theme. Of course, your winner last season. Yeah. That was a big that was a big moment. I guess you keep scoring against old clubs. You probably don't feel like you can fully celebrate in these moments. No, yeah, no, it's it's a it's it's a weird one. I mean, there I I, I didn't really want to. I've always kind of um found it as a you you kinda of have a connection, you build up a club, you kinda of always wanna kinda of come across as respect. Well that's just the type of person I yeah. am as well. I don't 
kind of want to shove it back in their face or do anything like that because what goes around comes around and it just goes to show you could be on the, the end side of a throbbing or, or not win and you can't you know get too high or too low in football and you know I just I just try and be modest about it when I do school and that was the case there you know in front of their fans it was a great moment one of the best moments because to score a winner against the opposition at your club it doesn't really get much better than that, but you just have to kind of be mellow about it. Yeah, serious finish. Yeah. Did, you, did you catch up with Casey the other night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I spoke to. I didn't get to properly speak to him after I spoke to him all day before the game. I was trying to get into his head, which I did. <laughs> um, you know, because I'm, I'm I'm good friends with Case, um, him and his family. So, yeah, you know, we spoke prior to, just kept getting into his head, trying to get him off his game a bit. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I thought he done well as well. So it's yeah. good to see him playing again, and, and you know him doing well. And just the, this squad at the moment, it feels like you all get on well in terms of, I guess, your closest friendships in that squad at the moment. Who are the players that you're sort of spending most time with? Do you think on and off the pitch? Well, not on the pitch, but off the pitch. Yeah, um, it's quite a few to be fair. I wouldn't say I'm the biggest social bunny, but I am. Um, you know, I got along with everyone. I think. Uh, be very surprised if anyone at the football club would say I'm I'm hard to get along with. But you know, um, Jada Silva, Antoine Semenyo, um, spend a lot of time with with those those guys. Um, Zach Viner, Andy, um, my wife and his his wife, they they get along as well. Um, I can keep going. We, yeah. we, you know, we try and do stuff off the pitch as much as we can in terms of going out together, food, drinks, social events. Like we're planning to go to the boxing this weekend. Oh, nice! Um, fingers crossed, everything goes well with that. A, a good group of us. Just, you know, I just think that breeds well for for on the pitch stuff. So, you know, it's a it's a good group. Um, Chris Martin, um, Joe Williams, a few, a good ten of us are, are planning on getting down there to watch it. Um, together. I guess important for the wider squad as well. Those players aren't necessarily playing to kind of feel like they're part of the, the team environment too. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like like you said, I get along very well with Tommy Conway, Alex Scott. These are young characters, but yeah. they're growing and it's important to, you know, keep them involved with the social aspects. Um, and it just helps the, you know, it helps the, the core of the squad. And, you know, some players, like, I, like we spoke about earlier, out there, I played golf with George. Um, Max O'Leary, Tim. So like, there's some element of connection, um, whether it be on the pitch or off the pitch, with a vast majority of the squad. And I think everyone will kind of be able to say the same. And like I said, I'm not the biggest social person. I quite chilled and just focus on football. But when there's a chance, it, it usually does have a, a a connection with you know another player or staff member or something of that nature. Yeah, and you're so you're 32 now. Mm -hmm. You seem to be at the sort of height of your game. You never seem to tire in matches yeah. whatsoever. I was t I was actually on the pitch side the other night, and Nigel Pearce I think said to you just he was telling you to press or something and gamble. I think mm -hmm. you know when you were when you were playing, but you, your energy levels don't seem to drop through the ninety minutes. Rather like Andy Ryman, for example. Do you do you have to sort of do anything different now? You're at sort of this stage of your career, or do you feel like you've got plenty of years left to to play football? It seems like you do. Yeah, I mean. I can't, I can't, I'll be delusional to believe. And is it that. annoying when people ask you that as well? Yeah, I think as well, I think it's a few things. I think obviously I'm 32 years of, of age. I played a lot of football as well. Um, but then there's this side of I've never really had a bad injury. You know, I don't really like to talk about it, but I, you know, that's helped. Um, um, for example, last year I probably didn't play much, so that wear and tear is probably not there's probably help me in a way or shape or form but yeah I do feel great my numbers are still as high as anybody's at the football club even at my age so um I think you were up there with the pre-season testing weren't you and everything I think yeah, somebody the, said physically yeah thankfully um <laughs> if you go and look at the chart at the training ground I'm I'll be in the top three of every nice one of the the categories get so, that in there. yeah yeah you get that in there but um yeah but no I just you know, I think genetically, um, I've been lucky in that in that aspect. I'm very athletic, which is part of my game. Um, and until that kind of deteriorates, I just feel like I still feel like I'm in my prime. I yeah. know the age probably don't say that, but 
with the experience I have and the fact that I'm still able to do everything physically as to my best capability as I was able to maybe at 24, 25 where most players are, I don't see why I couldn't show and, and be at my best right now. So I'm showing that at the minute and I just want that to continue, yeah. Yeah, and just finally, I mean, many years ahead of you still playing football, do you ever sort of think about life after the game and what you kind of might like to do or is it coaching maybe? Would that interest you or is it something in a completely different direction? Yeah, it's, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I'm under no illusion that that will come around one day. Mm. Um, I'm just trying to focus on playing and put everything into playing like you spoke about there, like do I have to do anything? I just try and live my life as professionally as I can um, to try and prolong my career at the highest level I can do for as long as I can. Um, you know, there is things that I would like to do within football. Um, I would definitely like to have a big impact on uh, football in Bermuda and trying to help that grow and trying to help the avenue of getting players to the UK and into academies and creating opportunities so that bodes well with the agencies type of stuff. So something of that nature. I don't see myself as a coach. I, I definitely think I'll look to, to, to do my badges and stuff like that to have that as an alternative, but for now, fully focused on just having a great season, trying to um, do as well as I can this year and just see where it gets me. That's that's the main focus. Well, you've made a massive contribution so far. City fans are, are loving watching you. Naki, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very no, much. No, it's been a pleasure. Um, thank you. Like, like I said, no problem, man. For me, it's just, just trying my best as, as always, yeah.